Hey guys, we're back with another video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can combine 2D and 3D in Godot to create more engaging immersive elements such as what you see here where there's this simple menu with a 3D background. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So as you can see here, I already have the uh, demo made, but I am going to be showing you how to create it step by step. So let's go ahead and create a new scene. And then the main node for this scene is going to be a canvas layer. We can just go ahead and rename this to be start menu or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Then as a child of it, we are going to add a control node. If I can type. So there we go. Now this control node is going to be the actual menu. So that's what I'm going to call it menu. Then I'm going to lay out full rect so that it takes up the entire size. Then I'm going to do control A and I'm going to add a margin container and then do layout full rect. Now, the reason I'm adding the margin container is so that I can add some margin or padding at the top and left or right and bottom as I need. To do that, I want to go over to the inspector, theme overrides, constants, and then here's where I can define the margins. So in this case, I want to have a margin at the top and on the left. Uh, so let me go ahead and add a margin on the top of 80 and then for the left, something like 60. Now you will actually see what it does here in a little bit once I add a child to the margin container. And in this case, I'm going to add a VBox container. So as you can see, if I select the margin container, it basically takes up the entire size. Now the VBox container has some spacing between the top and the left. That's basically what a margin container does. It adds some spacing on whatever side you want. So. It's, I would call it padding since I, uh, that's what I'm used to calling it, but in this case it's margin. Uh, but um, the, I added a VBox container as a child of it. A VBox container is basically just a node where anything you add as a child of it will be aligned vertically or stacked on top of each other. There's also HBox containers which aligns uh, you know, your nodes along the horizontal direction. In this case, we're going to use a VBox container and we're going to add a label uh, for our title. So let's just do game title because, you know, I'm very creative. Uh, so game title. Now it's very, very tiny. So we could go over to theme overrides and fonts and define a font here. I already have a uh, default style that I created uh, beforehand for the... Uh, demo so I'm just gonna go ahead and add that default theme to my menu with, which is the main control node uh, which is what all of these uh, other nodes are children of so go over to the inspector theme and then here we can click on empty to create a new theme or we can click the drop down and then in this case I'm gonna do quick load so that I can just add the default theme that I already made uh, you would go ahead and want to create your own theme though now it's still very tiny, so I can select the label and then go over to theme overrides, fonts, and then I already have a uh, some custom styling that I made for this specific title. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this main menu dot trust that I already created. And as you see, now it's an actual good size. And as if I actually click on the font that I added, you will see that pretty much all I did was in the settings for the size, I changed it to be 62. So you can just basically, you know, make your own font and override the size of it to be bigger. So that's pretty much all we want. Now you notice that it does take up the entire size here of the container or the margin container. If you don't want that, you could go to size flags and uncheck fill. And now you notice that everything takes the actual size it is. So I'm just gonna leave it like this, I guess. And then as another child of the VBucks container, I wanna add a button. And then I, get, I am going to add some text. So this is going to be the start button or start game is what we want it to say now I want it to be aligned to the left I could do it by changing the align here to left or I can do the same thing that I did up here and mess with the size flags so I can go to size flags 
and then uncheck fill and now it just takes up the actual size it is so I'm just gonna leave it like this and then I'm gonna rename it to start button so I know what it is same thing for the label just rename it to title and then I can select the start button and do control D and one more to get two more buttons this one's going to be the settings button and then the other one is going to be the quit button and I can just go ahead and change the text field and the inspector so this is gonna say settings and then the quit button is just gonna say quit like so now you notice that there's no spacing between the buttons and the title to add some spacing there's a couple ways you can do it so with the VBUX container you could add a control node or you can add a margin container I'm gonna go ahead and add a margin container now you want to move this margin container between the two elements you want to have space between so I'm gonna do that and move it between the title and the start button now I can select it again and the way I can add spacing is I can actually mess with this and add some margin as you will see here and it will add some spacing or I could go over to rect and then for the min size for the Y I can put something like 80 pixels and that will also add spacing now this is also what you could do with the control node you would just give a min size for the normal control node on the Y and that way you could also add spacing but this works for now uh, so I'm just gonna leave it like this so that's the actual menu now done so you can't actually see any background yet and that's because we gotta add it so with the start menu selected I'm going to add a spatial node and then this is gonna be the actual background so that's what I'm gonna rename it looks good and this is where I actually want to add my level or my 3d level uh, to my scene so that we can use it as the background now you could go and head and create it I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my demo scene here that I already created and then just copy the level I made ha uh, beforehand and then going to my new scene and then right clicking on background and then just pasting it and now I have my 3d level that I made previously in my scene so this is what we're gonna be using uh, now I can just hide all that so that I can easily see all my notes here then with the background selected to actually be able to see it because we can't see it at the moment as you notice here to see it we gotta add a viewport container layout and then we want to do full rack so it takes up the entire size we still can't see it so we want to add a viewport container as a well a viewport as a child of the viewport container and let's check the size of our viewport container by going to the rect and let's see it's 1280 by 720 so we want the viewport to be the same size so 1280 by 720 and that's pretty much all we want to do here now to be able to see the background we just gotta add a camera now if we go to 2d we still can't see it and I believe that's because of the drawing order so if I actually move background above the menu I should be able to see it now another thing before I forget is our camera is currently on the ground so let's actually take care of that right now so let's preview the camera so this is what we would be seeing right now so let's do control 2 so we have two viewports and then let's just move the camera into place where we actually want it this looks good and this should work well now if I go back to 2d to see the menu I should see the 3d background and I can so there you go that's pretty much all you actually need to do so if I actually run this scene here and let me just save it anywhere I should you know see the, the menu and the 3d background now the buttons don't actually work 
and they don't work because I haven't actually added a script to make them work. If you want to make them work, then go ahead and attach a script to your start menu and add some signals to check for the buttons being pressed to do some code. But yeah, that's pretty much all you actually need. So with that, we're done. Now, another thing though, just before we finish is if I run my original scene, uh, you will notice that I actually have some subtle animation for the camera and this is something you can easily add. It just makes your uh, scene more engaging, but yeah. With that, uh, hopefully you found the video helpful and if you liked the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful day.